And today we're talking about this extraordinary weather we've seen recently in the Bay Area and the state. We're experiencing a break in the rain right now. So nice to see that sunshine, but the cold is still here with a freeze warning and frost advisories issued for tomorrow morning. Joining me now to discuss the freezing temperatures, local snow, rain, and so much more is senior meteorologist at AccuWeather, Paul Pastelock. Uh, Paul, thank you so much for being here today. So much to talk about. There is, and it seems like uh, you, you can go on and on and on, and we only have a short time to do, do about it. But, uh, you know, there's been so much going on this season, and uh, there's a lot of talk about, uh, you know, not only what's going on now, but what does this mean going forward? Yeah. And so uh, it's just so much here to go. All right, so let's get started. We've had a record-breaking past year when it comes to record heat, rain, and snowfall. Mm -hmm. Is that fair to say we've seen some extremes just in the last year? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've seen uh, a lot of things happening here, not just in the West Coast, but the East Coast as well. But specifically here in the West Coast, uh, we go from this heat and dryness. Uh, and if you look back at last year, uh, remember how the fires, the wildfires took off in the southwestern part of the, of the United States really fast because of the buildup of heat. We we're seeing 90s and 100s in the southern part of the state in early March. And now we flipped the uh, corner here, and now we're talking about wintry weather and uh, a tremendous amount of precipitation coming in two big waves in late December and now again here in late February. So why did all of this happen? I mean, is this part of our changing climate? Part of it is. I mean, we look at things like uh, these what we call marine heat waves, uh, water temperature anomalies that are pretty significant and last for a long uh, period of time. We have two going on that are pretty significant one off the east coast of the United States, but one north of Hawaii that's been kind of floating back and forth a little bit over the last couple of years. And we think that's had some uh, some contribution to the upper level pattern uh, that has developed. We saw it back in 2021, the fall. We had a tremendous amount of precip come in and then it shut off in January, February. We think that's, that may have had some contribution to that active pattern and the one that we're seeing now. Let's talk about the rain precipitation. It's helped with the drought and reservoir levels. Where do we stand for both? Well, reservoir levels right now, we're at just below the historical averages in the northern part of the state. Just because it's been so cold, we haven't had a significant melt yet, but that's going to change as we go over the next couple of months. Now, the central and southern part and banked up on the west side of the Sierras, they're at or above right now historical averages on the reservoirs. So already from rain and what snow melt has taken place, and then you're going to see the seasonal time period of more snow melt contributing to that. We may have actually overcapacity, which could lead to some flooding down the road. So that's a significant uh, thing that we're going to be watching down the road here the next month, month and a half. Yeah, the Sierra snowpack is on record to break a 40 year record. Uh, can you explain the benefits of this and as you mentioned it's they're not all benefits right we are concerned right. about flooding in the future yeah there's benefits and there's some negatives mm -hmm. uh first of all the negatives i just want to kind of throw out there is uh, all this snow we're talking about you know the possibility of any warm-up that could occur with avalanches roof closures getting roads being closed economic uh setbacks because of these road closures being uh, occurring but the positive thing is is take a look at the agriculture we've been so many things have been happening across the country on the negative side for agriculture over the past year and a half. This is a positive note. The irrigation uh, process is going to be in full swing this year. Our fruits, our grains are going to be looking pretty good. That's a good uh, thing there. The ski industry has flourished this year, of course. And uh, it, it's just, you know, the positive thing is we got the drought. The drought is at, you know, right now, uh, as the last week of February, it was 33% on the severe side for the state. Last year, it was 70% at this time. And we expect here at AccuWeather, that 33% when the new update comes out could be almost eliminated. So a huge, huge positive there on the drought situation here in California. That's great to hear. Uh, I remember when we were dealing with that extreme heat uh, several months ago and Governor Newsom saying, this is the new normal, right? We should expect extremes in our state. Can you talk about that? I mean, are we just going to keep seeing records broken when it comes to heat, cold, rain, snow? Is that just going to be our new normal moving forward? Well, yeah. Well, you look at, I've been forecasting for 30 years. And when I was introduced to long-range forecasting about 12, 13 years ago, we looked at certain things like teleconnections, things that are kind of set in standard, La Nina, El Nino. 
uh, how it behaves. But things have changed in our oceans. Things have changed in the polar regions. We've seen wildfire season extended. We've seen heat waves coming on earlier. Uh, those teleconnections don't always completely work anymore in this given age. So it's very difficult for us forecasters uh, now to kind of predict some of these big events that we're seeing right now. But the one thing that we're seeing and, and we're latching onto is, is sea surface temperature anomalies. And we do think that they're having an effect, especially here on the West Coast, of changing the upper level patterns, making them more amplified. And I do feel that we are seeing those changes through climate change, but also other events that are taking place as well. So as we go forward, again, it's a learning process all over again for us forecasters. Hmm. Uh, you mentioned wildfire season. Uh, with all the rain, do you have early predictions of our wildfire season? Yeah, the one thing about California, it's difficult. I mean, we go through a dry period, okay? We go through dryness. Uh, anything that's greening up right now or will be in the next couple of months will dry out, uh, especially in the central and southern part of the state, much easier. The thing is, is that when you look at the dry period, we need to shorten that so we can control a little bit the, the season of wildfire season, which has been, if you look at climatology, has been expanding out on length. It's been uh, getting longer and longer in parts of the state. So if we can interrupt it, and there is some support that we could see some precipitation through May and even into June with upper level lows, we shorten the front side and we're going into possibly a weak El Nino by later this summer, which when you look at the, uh, the, the overall record of El Nino, it produces more tropical systems in the Eastern Pacific, which could draw more moisture late in the season. Mm -hmm. So if we can get those breaks in between the dry season, we can try to hold back wildfire season. But of course, we all know that 85% of the fires that are started are started by us people. And so it's hard to predict um, what's gonna take place this far out in advance. Right. Well, Paul, it's always fascinating to talk to you and hear your perspective. Thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for having me.